Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you all for the opportunity to provide testimony before you. It's an honor and a privilege to be here today to participate in these important proceedings. I am a visiting assistant professor in criminal justice at Shenandoah University in Winchester, Virginia. I also teach corporate strategy for the University of Maryland University College. I have a PhD in public policy, and marijuana policy is one of my primary areas of research. I have produced well-publicized reports on the value of the domestic marijuana crop, on the fiscal costs of marijuana laws, on the demographics and costs of marijuana arrests in the United States. And these reports, along with a report on marijuana arrests and related data for Indiana itself, uh, are being forwarded to the committee staff. In fact, there's a, a big stack of them over there you'll get, you'll get shortly. Uh, I also am involved in a bit of litigation with the federal government in which I and a bunch of nonprofit groups are seeking to have marijuana rescheduled under the Controlled Substances Act. And we'll be taking that matter to uh, the U.S. Court of Appeals in the uh, forthcoming months. I also have testified, uh, experience, excuse me, I also have experience testifying in criminal trials as an expert witness on marijuana use and marijuana cultivation. Now, I'm happy to discuss my research in terms of data and methodology findings and their implications for public policy, and I'll summarize some of it momentarily. But I think it's helpful to place my work and this issue in a useful context. I believe that the central and most important public policy issue related to marijuana in this country is the creation of more effective control over the substance, specifically to reduce teenage availability and use. Every other facet of this discussion, in my opinion, is subordinate to that policy goal, a policy goal for which there is broad consensus in this country. Now, excuse me for sounding a little pedantic. I, I'm, I'm a professor, so I get this way. Um, it's self-evident that, that marijuana is widely available in the United States, in my home state of Virginia, and also here in Indiana. It's self-evident that over 40 years of public policy based on prohibition and arrests have failed to provide effective controls over the cultivation, distribution, and use of marijuana in this country. It's self-evident that marijuana is a valuable commodity, that policies that reduce or remove its control from the justice system will save money, and that legalization and taxation as, as a control regimen will produce revenue for local, state, and the federal government. We can examine and debate the data on all of these topics, and we can seek to clarify orders of magnitude for each of those propositions. That doesn't change the qualitative aspects of, of, of this issue. Uh, nonetheless, I'm going to cover some of the key numbers that, that sort of, I think, put this in, in perspective. According to the data from the 2008 National Survey on Drug Use and Health, Indiana has 535,000 past year marijuana users. That's about 10% of the population aged 12 and older. There are 326,000 past month users. That's 6.7%. 185,000 of these annual users in Indiana are between the ages of 18 and 25. That's 27% of that age group. And 114,000, about 17%, have used marijuana in, in the past month. More importantly, there were 70,000 annual marijuana users in Indiana between the age of 12 and 17, about 13% of that cohort, of which 40,000 had used marijuana in the last month, 7.5%. So let's restate these numbers. Nearly 10% of the population 12 and over in Indiana have used marijuana in the past year, including 13% of teenagers and over 27% of those between the ages of 18 and 25. About 6% of the population 12 and over in Indiana use marijuana on a monthly basis, about 7% of teenagers, and nearly 17% of those 18 to 25. These figures have not changed much uh, from 2003 to 2008, for example. Um, in 2003, monthly use by 12 to 17-year-olds was about 40,000. That fell to 36,000 in 2005 back to 40,000 in 2008. The 2008 data, though, shows a slight increase in, in use in Indiana over 2007. Now, marijuana use in Indiana is very close to the, to the national uh, average. Just looking at those 18 and older, annual use in Indiana is 9.93 percent. Annual use nationally is 9.94 percent. 
For past month use, Indiana 6.12 percent, national 5.88. Now, nationwide, according to this annual survey, 50% uh, of teens aged 12 to 17 report marijuana is easy to obtain, as do 76% of those aged 18 to 25. But here's the most important statistic that we should understand. If you drill deeper into the National Household Survey data, beyond the, the tables and into the actual mother load of data they provide, nationwide, 787,000 individuals Teenagers between the ages of 12 and 17 report selling drugs. That's 787,000 teenagers report selling drugs. And for the sake of argument, let's make the ballpark assumption that most, if not all of them, sell marijuana, the nation's most popular illegal drug. Now, there's only 1.76 million people in this cohort of frequent marijuana users in this age group. And that suggests that approximately 44% of monthly teenage marijuana users also sell marijuana. Now, if you compare it to the annual population, not the, 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 month, the, not the monthly users, uh, it's 23%. So there we get sort of a, a, a bounded estimate. One-fourth to one-half of teen marijuana users sell marijuana to other teens. The lesson here is that marijuana is available to teenagers because other teenagers sell it to them. Profit is what fuels teenage marijuana availability. We have problems with teenage alcohol and tobacco use in this country, but the problem is not exacerbated by profit-motivated sales from teen to teen. Furthermore, we have made great progress reducing teenage marijuana use of these substances without resorting to prohibition and arrest-based policies targeting the entire citizenry, regardless of age. Now, as you well know, possession of one ounce of marijuana in Indiana has a maximum penalty of one year. Possession of two to four ounces is punishable by up to three years. According to the Uniform Crime Reports, there were about 17,000 arrests for marijuana possession in Indiana in 2007. When measured against the number of annual users that year, which was 512,000, that means that you're arresting 3.2% of all the marijuana users. Um, this level of enforcement activity has dubious deterrent value, especially when held against the persistent patterns of use and long-term availability. The arrest rate for marijuana possession in Indiana is 228 per 100,000, less than the national rate of 257. Arrest rates and penalties vary from state to state, and so do marijuana usage levels. But what is consistent throughout the country is that marijuana remains profitable, available, and use is prevalent among 12 to 17-year-olds, regardless of enforcement policies. Marijuana offenses both Possession and sale accounted for nearly 6% of all arrests in Indiana in 2007. Now, if you leave out the category all other offenses and just look at the, the, the ones categorized and reported by the Uniform Crime Reporting Program, only four other crimes accounted for more law enforcement activity. Arson, drunkenness, larceny, and driving under the influence. The volume of arrests related to marijuana offenses, of which nearly 90% are possession-related, produce considerable costs. There is transportation to the police station, an arrest report, custody pending arraignment, an initial appearance before the court, review of the case filed by the prosecutor, consultations and plea negotiations with defense counsel, placement of the case on the judicial docket, a hearing, perhaps even a trial. Even allowing that many cases result in probation and a fine, marijuana cases require the utilization of time and resources of the criminal justice system, a system beset by tight budgets and increasing priorities, such as, for example, domestic violence, the sexual abuse of children, and much more serious drug-related offenses. It is admittedly difficult to put a dollar figure on the cost of marijuana laws, which is why I stress these costs are self-evident to informed observers of the criminal justice system. However, one method of estimating the costs of drug arrests is to prorate them on a percentage basis using the total costs of the justice system. This is a very general method and one easily criticized. Nonetheless, the, um, 
this is the formula I have used to generate an estimate of, of the cost of marijuana enforcement. It's also a formula used by the National Office of Drug Control Policy. The Bureau of Justice Statistics report that criminal justice expenditures for Indiana, police, courts, and corrections amounted to $2.4 to $2 billion in 2005. That year, marijuana arrests accounted for 6.2% of all the arrests in the state. That produces an estimated cost of $149 million. Now, certainly, this is a, a very general ballpark estimate and uh, one that can be easily criticized.